Um, uh, guest minister this afternoon, certainly not the least, is uh, no other than the most reverend Steve Delves, the pastor of Hope Church, Aldershot. Let us please welcome Pastor Steve. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I've never been called most reverend before. Um, I, I'm, I'm probably the most normal bloke you've ever met, I hope. Um, and um, I'm afraid I haven't really bought much. I've, I've just bought you a stick. But um, I'm hoping this will help illustrate what I feel the Lord has given me for you on your seventh anniversary. Now, if you've got a leadership role here in the church, would you mind just standing for me for a second? First of all, can we just give these guys a round of applause? We just want to honor you, honor you for what you're doing and just for how you're serving. And we want to say thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. There is a great story in uh, Matthew 19 where Jesus meets a wealthy young man. And he is like the world's greatest joy for any pastor. He'd be like the perfect leader. You know, he's described as he's rich, not only just financially rich, but he is morally rich. He's a good guy. And, uh, but he comes with two questions. He said, he says, uh, Jesus, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What must I do? And then as the discourse goes, he then also says, what is it that I lack? And here is this guy who is, you know, he's in a crowd of people, probably everybody knows him. And, um, you know, he's wealthy, which is a sign of blessing from God in the Old Testament. And so, you know, and, and then Jesus says, well, what, what is it that you do, you know, what should I do? He said, well, do you keep the commandments? And he says, yes, I do. I've kept them ever since my childhood. And, um, and, and Jesus commends him for it. And nobody argues. So everybody around this young man is going, well, yeah, he's quite a nice guy. He's really good. So he's rich, wealthy, and he's, he's rich morally, and he's also humble. He says, what do I lack? The perfect leader. And yet, after his conversation with Jesus, he goes away sorrowful. He goes away sad. And I think it's just a little bit of a lesson about leadership that I just want to bring, just to encourage you, I hope, to the stick. We have a phrase I was taught when I was a child, uh, which is, don't get the wrong end of the stick. Yeah, we've all heard of that one, don't get the wrong end of the stick. And, and basically, this young, wealthy, morally strong, humble man got the wrong end of the stick. Because his two questions were, what must I do and what do I lack? And usually that's what happens in leadership, isn't it? It's like, what can I do and, and what do I lack? What, what skills do I need to build up on? What, what kind of things that I need to have to, to build myself up so I can be a better leader and you know, all of that kind of thing? But, you know, and Jesus is talking about faith and he says, okay, so what is it that you should do? We say, well, let's keep the commandments. Okay, so let's do the first commandment. Well, what's the first commandment? There shall be, the Lord is one. There is only one God. Okay. Right, give away all your wealth. And the rich man goes silent because he suddenly realizes that his wealth is his God. Now, nowhere else in the Bible does, does, is, is anyone told that they have to give up their wealth. But in this point, Jesus says, it's impossible for you to do all these things. What is it I must do? Well, it's impossible for you to do by following the law. What is it that I lack? Well, it's because you don't do what you're meant to do. 
But he's commended for doing all of those things. And right at the end, and we've heard it a couple of times, haven't we? The disciples look at this and go, hang on. This just seems impossible. And Jesus says, what is impossible for man is possible for God. Because we can't do what Jesus did. Only Jesus was able to do the impossible. It's not what we do. It's not what we lack. It's what we receive. And we receive the grace and mercy and love of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it's only in that. It's not about what you do. So I'm going to invite you leaders. Would you just stand up for me for a second again? Leaders, please just stand. And would you just come, would you come forward? Would you come, out, come here for a second? Because I'd really love um, to. Can I ask all the leaders and uh, everyone who is helping us in the ministry? So even the music uh, servants and... Please uh, welcome all those people who um, uh, have been being used by the Lord. I mean, even you, Tisha and David, I think if you are happy, please come and stand with us. So Hector, I'm going to give you my stick. I want to hold it in the good end. Yeah. To hold it in the middle, that way you can't go wrong. Um, and I want this just to be a, a, a reminder to you. Don't get the wrong end of the stick. This is not about what you do or what you lack. This is about you receiving. It's what you receive from Christ. And that is what will fuel your leadership. Goodness. So... I'd love us all to pray, but I'll, I'll perhaps say the words, and I'm going to invite the Holy Spirit to come once again. And I would ask you just to receive. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for my brothers and sisters here and their passion and their enthusiasm to serve you and to serve this church. Lord, I want to agree with everything that Alwyn said. Your hand is upon this community and upon their work and their deeds and what they're going to do here in Aldershot. And faith without works is dead, as we are reminded. But it's because our works come out of the overflow of our faith. And faith is a gift. I believe, but help me in my unbelief, is one phrase that someone used of Jesus. One desire. And so, Lord, I want to pray for faith for these amazing people I want to pray for all the resources of heaven to be open up to them. Lord, it's not about what they do. It's not about what they lack. It's about their receiving of you, Holy Spirit. Build their faith. And out of the overflow of their faith, may these deeds of love come out. Thank you for this ministry of care that you've prophetically put over them. May it increase. May it increase. May it increase. Lord, we want to see your kingdom come and your will be done here in Aldershot and the surrounding towns. Lord, would you use these people mightily as they serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much.